you have your pick of 12. Which one are you going with? Uh, the chocolate always just like, I gravitate toward the yeah. chocolate. Which one did he say this one is? Was it gonna? I think that one's raspberry. This one's strawberry shortcake. That one was the special. If I take raspberry, will you be upset? No, not okay. at all. Let's you do, do that raspberry. one. I'll do the special because okay. I mean, I feel like you have to at least try. They all look phenomenal. I'm gonna cut mine so you can have some. Okay, I'm gonna do that too, so I don't look crazy. <laughs> as we're doing. And then, like, if we have smaller tries of one donut, then then that means we can basically try one of each. Do like top donut top us? Yeah. A la yeah. carte I think donuts? So that's yeah. Perfect. And then at the end, we can even do a little draft. Obviously, we're talking about the draft, so we'll draft our, <laughs> we'll draft our top five. This is great. Yours is good? Yes. I think it was raspberry, right? It, it is raspberry. Oh, yeah, that one's good. Which one is it? You said that's a special? That's strawberry shortcake. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you made a, the right call. <laughs> let's, let's just try to see how many we can tackle in <laughs> 20 minutes. All right, so talking about the draft, mm -hmm. I'm not a huge fan of mock drafts and predictions <laughs> because if anyone watched Troy Weaver the other day, he didn't give anything away. No. However, if you were to look you know, forward now, do you have any predictions? My gut is it'll come down to three guys, Jaden Ivey, Keegan Murray, Benedict Mathern. I believe... Sacramento's, there's been kind of smoke out there that they like Keegan Murray. They took him to dinner, wined and dined him, all this stuff. I still think, I don't know if Sacramento keeps the pick at four, but I think Jaden Ivey goes at four, whether it's Sacramento or somebody else trades up. And then it leaves Murray, Matherin, and I think Detroit goes Murray. Okay. Um, just kind of fits the team that they have here. Quiet guy, works hard, not the most flashy. Um, I know he has fans in the front office. He, he's productive. Um, I, he's gotten better every single year. People talk about his age. He's 20. He'll be 22 when the season starts. So, and you know, in sports world, that's dinosaur age. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, if you look back to where he was in high school, he had to go to a JUCO to get Division One mm -hmm. offers. At Iowa's freshman year, wasn't a big impact guy. And then last year was the best player in the Big Ten. So there's upside there, I think. So, And, and I think they lean that way. One thing I saw that Troy Weaver did say was that maybe not necessarily the best player right now, but yeah. the best player in the long haul. Do yeah. you feel like he is that? Like you say, you talk about his potential. That's that's the question. Um, I personally like Murray a lot. I do think you can make a case that somebody like Ivy has more long haul potential. You can make a case that somebody like Matherin has more long haul potential. Uh, but I do think Keegan has the potential to be better down the road. And I also think he has a chance to impact the game right away. So. It'll be interesting because we talk about these, the ages of players and like, oh my gosh, he's 22, there's not much room to grow. It's like, well, in sports, most guys don't reach their prime till like 27, mm -hmm. 28. So why is five years left on a 22 year old, like why can't he reach a, a ceiling you don't think? So I think all these guys in some way or form help the Pistons now and also have upside going forward. Um, I just think Murray and Matherin would probably impact greater right now and maybe have a little less upside going forward than Ivy. Uh, but I think Ivy isn't going to kind of jump on the scene, aside from like his athleticism, which will catch people, but just in terms of the whole basketball package, I think he might take a little bit to, to show that. Okay. Take a break to try another donut. Yes. <laughs> do you want to go for chocolate? Yeah, let's I think do we chocolate. both are eyeing up let's the chocolate. Do, let's do for that. Sure. <laughs> What's this green one? Did he say, do you remember? I don't remember what the green one was. Is he out here? He's not. I guess we Did just, let's just like take a bite and find yeah. out later. Mystery donut. Yes. Do you mind if I touch it? No, not at all. <laughs> Thank you. When you look at the biggest need for the Pistons, mm -hmm. what comes out to you? Well, it's, I think it's, to be vague, talent. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's important that at this stage of their restoration, as Troy likes to call it, that you just continue to collect the best players possible. Um, they've done a good job of getting guys that look to be NBA players for a long time, and Sadiq Bey and Isaiah Stewart. Obviously, Kate Cunningham's a face. Jeremy Grant's still on the team, still a very good player. Um, Marvin Bagley showed some stuff after the trade. Frank Jackson has had moments. Amadou Diallo has had moments. So I don't think any of those guys, aside from Cade, maybe Sadiq, you look at him and you see, OK, like this could be the first or second or third best player on like a really good team. Outside of that, you see a lot of really good role mm -hmm. players. So 
I think for the Pistons, it's it's looking to find that second, third. What guy can be the second or third best player on a on a really good team? Um, so just continue to find talent, and also when you find talented players and you find talented young players, it gives you the options down the line to like maybe execute a trade for a, a more proven veteran or a, a more proven guy in his prime. So the better I'm always I always err on the uh, the side of just getting the best players possible, and you figure out fit positionally and on the court down the line. Do you think that Cade Cunningham and a lot of the guys you named take some pressure off of the front office and finding a fit because? They are such good leaders, as yeah. we've always heard. I think Cade specifically, because he's so talented and his game is so, I mean, for lack of a better term, versatile, mm -hmm. that that was the hard part. Finding a guy that can be the guy, a guy that you can put the ball in their hands, he can play with the ball in his hands, he can play off the ball. When you find a guy like that, you're able to, it's much easier to build a roster and build a mm -hmm. team when you have that type of versatility uh, in one person. So the fact that they got Cade makes almost anybody sense in terms of when you think about fit because Cade can do so many things on the basketball court he can play with so many different types of players that you really can just like okay who do we think is the most talented right. and, and go from there you mentioned Jeremy Grant yes do you think anything's gonna happen with him I lean 55 45 he gets okay. traded <laughs> at some point um, to my knowledge Detroit likes him mm -hmm. he likes Detroit him and Troy have a great relationship it's been well documented um, I also don't think that, like, he's a good player in his prime. This team wants to get good players. I don't think signing him to an extension is off the table. Like, the goal is to get good players, and they have one in-house. And are we sure that anybody in this draft will be as good as Jeremy Grant? Right. We're not. So I also think, though, that if Keegan Murray lands in Detroit, I think Keegan can step in and be impactful right away. They play the same position. If you're able to get more assets for Jeremy, I think that just makes sense logistically, but I mean, you never know if they end up with maybe an Ivy or a Matherin, a wing or a guard, it makes a lot more sense to keep Jeremy. Right. All right, let's try this mystery donut. All right. We don't know what kind it is. Oh, I didn't take a bite of the chocolate. Oh, try the chocolate. I thought it was great. Oh, that's good. Tastes like cake. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Troy Weaver said they're at the mercy of the board. Mm -hmm. Anything. I mean, number five, I feel like, is just a, top, a tough spot Thank to be you. with anything yeah. being able to happen. Yeah. Possibilities aside, trades aside, you know, maybe inklings that you have of what teams might go where, what's your best case scenario pickup for the Pistons? Really puts you on the spot. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's, a, it's a preference thing, right? So I think the Pistons have done a good job of starting to usher in young fans. Uh, Fans who have kind of grown up watching the likes of Russell Westbrook, uh, John Morant, very electric type players. So I think if you ask certain fan base, John Morant, he's exciting, jumps out of the gym, lightning quick. Um, if you ask maybe more uh, basketball, I don't want to say savvy, but more, I don't know what the word is, but Keegan Murray is just like your, your basketball player is basketball player. Mm -hmm. Does all the little things, does cuts, moves, can play without the ball. Um, just very, can fit in with any team. Benedict Matherin is kind of a blend of the two where he's athletic, not quite as athletic as Ivy. Uh, can shoot probably on the same level or if not better than Keegan Murray. Um, I think is an underrated passer. I think he would be fun. I think he has some like dog in him too. Like I think yeah. Pistons fans would really like mm -hmm. him. So if you're asking me personally, I Benedict Matherin is my favorite outside of the Chets, Jabari's, and Paolo's. Mm -hmm. um, I personally like Benedict. I think he could step in and help right away. I think he's a very good fit next to Cade. And I think there's upside going forward. I think if you ask, if you took a survey on most Pistons fans, the answer would be Jaden Ivey. Um, and I think if you asked, a mix of Pistons people in the building and fans, the answer is Keegan Murray. So yeah. I personally like Benedict Mather, and I think the majority would probably say Jaden Ivey because he's, he's a little bit he's a little bit more exciting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not a bad spot at five, though. Not at all. Okay. Mystery donut. <laughs> oh, that's like, I was going to guess that. Um, Eli Mish? Yeah. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like they have this in like the Girl Scout cookies. Thin Mint? No, not Thin Mint. Excuse me? Ma'am? What kind of cook or 
What kind of donut is this? Key, key lime. Oh, okay. It's good. This is very good. It was really good. Might be my favorite so far. Yeah, I actually really like that one. Hmm. Which one's catching your eye now? I don't know. I'm here for the mystery. Like, I don't... Yeah. It kind of looks like sweet and sour chicken. <laughs> like, so I'm curious to see what this is. Yeah, I need to know. Do that one? I need to know how this one is. <laughs> I like this, the appetizer yes. size of all these. This is going to be like my new spot. I'm like actually kind of mad at you that you <laughs> set this up here because I don't live far. And it's I really love good for your health and yeah. fitness. I just gotta, I'll, maybe, maybe I'll jog here. Yeah. That might help. That's perfect. And maybe not get a dozen, maybe one or two or six. Does anybody ever just get one or two? No. Not That's really good too. Lemony? Lemony. Mm -hmm. That's good. That one is good. I feel like I want to try that one. Do you remember I what kind that was? I was waiting for you to say it. I, I don't. <laughs> I don't think like it's I, cranberry. I know. I like think of like red velvet, maybe because this is like the right that's color. Like my, that's you like you red velvet. My, that's how you get to my okay, heart. Okay. Yeah. I'm a sucker for a good red velvet. I'll give you the big piece then. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm gonna guess cranberry though before we go. Cherry. There's cherry. This is the winner so far. Really? I'm biased. Like. Cherry's your thing. Every year, when it's my birthday, of course my mom, even though I'm 30, still has to make a cake and everything. <laughs> it's always white uh, cake mix, cherry frosting. Oh, perfect. So then this, that is this yours. takes me to like my birthday getting a Deion Sanders jersey at like 14. <laughs> so like I'm, I'm nostalgic. Well, we now. talk about being 30 and eating stuff like this. We went for all of the colorful ones and the chocolate one, 100%, right? Yeah. <laughs> like the glaze and the plain cinnamon <laughs> sugar and untouched. This one untouched. We went for the eye catchers. I mean, we're going to go for blue next, yes, right? Yes, 100%. Like any true child would pick <laughs> blue with sprinkles. I mean, I have no idea what kind of blue is. Blueberry? But that one looks like it could be blueberry. Heck, I would say that's blueberry. I don't, I don't know what that is. Like I'm Superman still, ice cream vibes. Though, so that's know? what I was about to say. Like I'm that guy. Like if I get ice cream, it's Superman ice cream. <laughs> I don't really. So I brought you to the right place. Though. Yes. Like I, <laughs> like I love sprinkles on my donuts. Yeah, I do too. Birthday cake. Birthday cake for sure. That might be. Oh yeah. I might have to get like some to go. Okay. So we've tried six, seven. Seven of 12. Okay, if you were to do, let's do top five because the Pistons have the number five pick in the draft. Yeah. Starting from five. Of the donuts. Starting favorites. at one. Of, of my favorite. Yeah, who would you draft first? That birthday cake did right. just hit a little different. I agree with you. I, I think birthday cake for sure. Birthday cake one. Birthday cake one. Cherry two. Cherry two. The key lime, surprisingly, mm -hmm. was very good. Uh, three. Chocolate, four. All right, so this is five. This is the Pistons. This is the Pistons pick. If the Pistons were to pick a donut. <laughs> Which one was this again? Was Strawberry this? shortcake. See, I don't really remember these ones, and I, I feel I mean, like I hope that's not an omen to Pistons fans. Like, I'm not gonna, <laughs> like this guy is just not going to be memorable. He wasn't very memorable. Had a taste, enjoyed it, but don't remember much about it. <laughs> Raspberry, because that was my first one, and I feel like that's always a safe choice. Mm -hmm. First so, impression. First, good first impression. You liked it enough to go there first. <laughs> Didn't let you down. And I think the Pistons. A little safe. A, a little you know, safe. like the key lime is green. Yes. It we been don't anything. know how that's going to be. It could have been anything. But that one is, you know, a good color. It has sprinkles. And I think the Pistons, given how they've drafted over the last decade or so, I think the fans, if they decide to go with a pick that you may think is safe, even if it's not safe, but they on the surface it's safe, I think that's a good call. I think that for the Pistons, it's important to just draft players that are NBA players. Uh, because for many years here, they have struggled picking players who have really lasted in the league. Um, I mean, you can go down the list. I don't want to call names out, but you can name five or six guys who in and out of the league very quick and were top 20 picks. So. As much as you should swing for the upside, 
Uh, if you don't necessarily believe in the upside, I don't think there's anything wrong with going with a guy that you feel comfortable will be an NBA player for 10, 12, 13 years. Looking at, I mean, this is what, Trey Weaver's third draft, correct, here? Yes, this will be his third, yep. How does he compare to Pistons of the past? Like you said, the draft was never maybe yeah. a bright spot for the franchise, but... I mean, no pressure You're coming off of Cade Cunningham. Well, this, yeah, this is what he was brought in to do. You go back to his time in OKC, Utah. Um, this was a guy that has been long heralded as a, one of the best talent evaluators in the game. I think that's why he got, I think that's what intrigues him about being a GM. I think that's where he really hangs his hat on. Um, and you go to you go to his track record and at previous stops, there's a lot of a lot of guys that you can point to like Troy was behind that mm -hmm. pick, and they've panned out to be well. I know, I, don't, I know everybody knows about Russell Westbrook and uh, those guys, but like he drafted DeMontis Sabonis to the Thunder, who's obviously turned out to be a very mm -hmm. good player, and then you can go down the list. So I think Troy has done a very good job. Uh, you look at getting Sadiq Bey and Isaiah Stewart in the in the teens, and both of those guys were all rookies, and I think both of those have future. Both those guys have futures as starters mm -hmm. and rotation guys, at least on really good teams. Um, Killian Hayes has has he improved in year two? Obviously got out to a slow start with the injury and, and trying to get acclimated. The, the jury's still out on him, uh, but you got Cade Cunningham. Isaiah Livers looks like he could be a really good player down the line. Um, so right there, that's four or five guys in two drafts. I mean, that's pretty good. It's pretty good math if you ask me. Yeah, yeah. totally. Cool. Anything else you want to add? No. Thank you for doing this. Out. Yeah, um, of course. Next time you see me, I'll probably. <laughs> <laughs> Gain the freshman 15. <laughs> but this is phenomenal. Thank you for this. Thank you oh to God, uh, Yellow Light for having us. I know. This was amazing. This was phenomenal.